tell them it's all for the broken. 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 It tell them it's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Healing Broken Souls. I am Benny Powell, along with John Boyanowski, and we have two two uh, guests that we have here today. We have uh, Kyron Montero and my son Benny Lee Powell the second, and we're going to be talking about uh, fathers today. Um, a, a lot of things have been said about fathers in recent years, good, bad, or indifferent. But what me and John thought we'd bring today today is a discussion of the modern day father. Yeah, so I, I think I want to start off with this first question. What was your father like? <laughs> uh, that's posed to me, huh? <laughs> that's, that's posed to all of you, in, in, uh, including Benny. Oh, including me too? Yes, including you. Uh, well, I'll start off. I, okay. I, I'll start off. Uh, to be very honest with you, I, my father was a, uh, a disciplinarian or a military disciplinarian in my eyesight. I mean, um, he did the best that he could. I'm going to say that and give him all the respect that he deserves. Uh, he was high, high on education. Um, um, anything below a B was unacceptable. Um, but sometimes uh, my father could be viewed as missing in an action. Um, that was nothing af against him. It was just who he was. Uh, if it wasn't for my father, I believe that uh, the four children that he had raising by himself all alone, uh, we would have been in an orphanage or some other bad catastrophe uh, would have happened to us. Um, I'm not going to say I was raised in the perfect home, but my father, he was in the home, and he did try to do uh, the very best that he could, um, whether I liked it or not. You know, when you're young, you think you have all the answers about your father, but uh, you grow up and you find out a lot of different things about your dad. What a, Go ahead. It's on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was, uh, my pops died from a, uh, a illness battling with uh, cancer and some other things in 2009. So I was raised by him since the age of two. Biological father was never really present. So that's why Grady Speed, the late Grady Speed, who was a, a elder here at Grady Second Baptist, that's who raised me. And he was, uh, he could be militant like Pastor Powell was talking about. Uh, I ain't going to lie, from early childhood all the way up to about 17 I felt that leather belt <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I was I was bullheaded so I was I was real rebelish so he was always only but he instilled in me uh a lot of spirituality uh taught me theology just taught me how to just move so I mean he was well balanced he's the reason that I rap and do music that wouldn't exist without him so I mean he was just he was like a creative drill sergeant but mm -hmm. but it was a good uh mentor and, and father as well so awesome Benny? Oh man, my daddy's sitting right here, so I'm gonna have to be. <laughs> you have <laughs> you have the total freedom to be totally honest. No, nah, I'm just playing. Uh, my daddy, uh, he was he was just he learned he did what he knew, you know, and uh, he was young. I think he had him and my mama had me when he was like 19, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I kind of contribute to my upbringing. Like we kind of grew up together. <laughs> you got some teenagers having kids. You growing up with your kids, kind of. So you learning and going as you could. You know, we was high discipline. You earn everything. Uh, nothing's given. <laughs> um, it ain't like some of these kids where, you know, you got some of them, they talk back, talk back. Man, he give you that look, boy. You know, you better be quiet or you, you finna go through a wall here in a second. <laughs> no, nah, but it was, you know, man, like any family, you got your good times, you got your bad times. Uh, I Looking back, uh, I'm older now with my own kids. Some of them times where I thought I was right when I was a teenager, boy, I'd be looking back like, boy, 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 you just don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it could have been worse if I didn't have my daddy. So he was always there. But you know what? Some of the things that, that, you, that you're saying right now, that's how I felt, you know. You know, if, if I would have had this or maybe if things were a little bit different, maybe uh, you wouldn't have had to go through as much as you went through um, and and not taking anything away from my father because his father died when he was, uh, man, my dad had to 
be eight years old when his father died. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I don't know what impact that put on him, you know, but still he kept us together for, for good, bad, or indifferent. And the one thing I can say about my father is that uh, he didn't have to really, really go to, to the jailhouse for any of us mainly, and that, you know, he did do the best he could do. Yeah, yeah. I think um – Dang, I kind of just went blank there for a second. You was talking. I was like, I got one for you. No, but I think every father wants their uh, kids to do better. And I think in our line, uh, I think my father done better than my granddaddy. I think I'm doing better than what he did with us when we was younger. And I hope my two boys do better with their kids when they get older. You know, and that's just the whole platform and the demographic we try to give. Like we sit my sons down sometimes, me and my dad talk to my sons. Something that I didn't get the privilege of with my granddad, like my daddy and his daddy talking to me about some stuff. You know, we try to cut off some of that uh, that era, like mm-hmm. the stuff they had hit the wall with that we had to hit the wall with. You know, I feel if I got some of that, uh, I probably would have missed some of those speed traps myself. You know, the one thing about being with Kyron, you know, after his dad died and me coming here to the church, it, Kyron's kind of like, you know, uh, a child from a, from I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like a father That's just yeah, what he yeah, said Yeah we'll put it like he's that He's my adopted son Yeah my adopted son Look, look, look Daryl you know, We got Daryl like, behind the camera Daryl back there dying Daryl is oh, another man. one I mean really Kyron and Daryl Are like my sons in the church And you know It's kind of like My dark okay, skinned brother Yeah uh, <laughs> You know It's kind of like Really really uh, uh, Taking these uh, young men That are becoming fathers That are getting into relationships That are, are Becoming men in their own own right and john you ain't getting off easy on this one either brother uh-huh. so hold on <laughs> so and you know um you know there are times when i have to you know pull a little tight on both of y'all uh being as you grow up and i see you with your daughter times all the time you know what you said something though like uh i ain't trying to do a shameless plug but i do got my own podcast the kyron montero show available on all platforms <laughs> right now there you go. New album available right now too. Oh, <laughs> no, but I was just talking to a, a friend oh, of mine, man. Philip Boyd. We just did a mm-hmm. we just did one a episode about fatherhood, and I was telling him my biological father. I don't feel like I got hate in my heart mm-hmm. because him and my mom were so young. I mean, it was my mom was right out of high school. Matter of fact, I think she was in high school mm-hmm. uh, when she had me. Mm-hmm. And so looking back, I used to, you know, growing up, I used to feel some kind of way. Towards my biological father for not being present because I was like, man, I felt like I was a pretty dope kid. Like, why would you want to miss out? But now that I'm grown with my own daughter, I look back like, man, you was a kid. Mm-hmm. I done felt him but my own head, so I don't even feel like I got space to judge him in that way. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. I feel like uh, as a young man going through your own things with your kids, you never fully understand your father's mistakes until you got to walk through them. Mm. <laughs> So. Well, what about the times whenever we tell you about our mistakes and you're like, well, that's hypocritical now because you did it. How come, you know, that's we because can't do we, it? we're going through it at the moment. So we don't really want you to be, you know, nah, yeah, it's hypocritical because we're going through it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Pastor Powell has told me stuff. He told me stuff back in 2019, 2020, warned me of stuff as a father, even as a husband. And, you know, I didn't get it until. Maybe year, two years later, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like sometimes my dad is still parenting from the grave. I might be doing something with my daughter. Now I remember growing up, I'd be like, "Man, nah, I never treat my daughter like this." Now she raised her voice. I'm like, "Yo, who you talking to?" <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Well, the I, one thing I did want to talk to John about is, you know, when we were uh, in college together, we were young fathers then. Yeah, we were. Okay, and and I remember how we met. Your daughter um, was pregnant. Yep. Uh, was she married? Nope. She was She was not married. She was 17 when she got pregnant okay. to conjoined twins. Mm-hmm. And then um, the young man that uh, impregnated her, you know, he he wasn't one of my top picks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, the joy that came out of that, even mm-hmm. though we had the baby girls for uh, only four days, Rebecca and Stephanie, mm-hmm. um, they were... Absolutely beautiful. And, and just to bring up a little history, the babies were born conjoined, am I correctly? Yeah, they were conjoined twins. And so their form of uh, 
being conjoined was one that could not be operated on or they couldn't be separated. And so they had two heads and they had one torso mm -hmm. and they had their arms. Two of them were fused together in the back. Mm -hmm. And then it came down to just one body. And, you know, uh, they, they were told at the time that they wouldn't even be born uh, alive. And if they were born alive, that we would have to take and go back. And um, in fact, that's exactly what happened was they were born, they brought me back because I was a pastor at the time. And I gave last rites, I gave an anointing and I gave a baptism all within like 30 seconds of their life, simply because they they were afraid that, you know, what happens after. Mm -hmm. and, and so even being a young father at that time, you know, we had just got to know each other. And so we talked and we prayed and we did all those things. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine the struggle of being a father, having to deal with a daughter that's going through that. You know, what was your mindset at that time? My mindset was totally crazy because, you know, here I am, like you said, a young mm -hmm. father. Their young daughter, who is unmarried, is pregnant. And, of course, me being a pastor at the time, working in the church and everything. Um, actually, I wasn't a pastor. I was, right before, I was training to be a pastor, mm -hmm. but I was working heavily in the church. And so um, going through my mind is, you know, how can I be there for my daughter, especially going through something that is, like, literally one in a million? Mm -hmm. And it, it's real hard to, I mean, not a pastor around could identify with what I was going through. Right. You know, and... and I was a pastor. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, put, sure? I'm going. I'm, I'm pastor. Sure? Yeah, I was. You're going I was pastor, a pastor. No pastor. I was a pa I just started <laughs> pastoring. Yes, I was. I was just starting pastor. It was mm -hmm. 2004 that this happened, and 2001 is when I became a pastor. So I was pastoring. Okay. But in any case, um, not a pastor can sit there. You know, you hear people come up to you and say, "Hey, you know, I know exactly what you're going through." No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. You know, I've lost grandkids and I've lost my daughter. No, you, I, I appreciate you sharing and everything, mm -hmm. but you don't know. Yeah. You know, and, and just like all of us here mm -hmm. who are fathers, you know, the way that we love our children is so different and it's so personal that no matter how close we feel that we can come to it, nobody knows the love that they have from their father. You know, and I guess mm -hmm. this is a great po uh, place where we can break and segue to uh, what has been some of the challenges for you guys as fathers living in this current age, living with, <laughs> with all the challenges that, um, that, are you, that you're facing right now? Uh, so for me, I, got, I have one daughter. Um, my daughter is autistic, so mm -hmm. that comes with a set of challenges mm -hmm. um, be, because some of the, you know, autism is about de developmental. Right skills so for me just trying like the older she gets that attitude is growing the taller she get <laughs> and uh my patience be growing it thin okay. it seemed like thin so i'm in a phase right now where i'm dealing with a lot of back talking mm. more attitude she's expressing herself more and uh so oh, is your daughter man she about to be seven in october oh you got it early <laughs> 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 And, and so, and she's the only kid, so I'm not going to lie, you know, that spoiled stage of mm -hmm. thinking she can get whatever she wants. But, I mean, she's real, too. I mean, she don't try to act too grown. You know, she Disney Plus with Frozen. So, I think my challenges are just more so, like, my temperament and patience. And mothers, we're not leaving you out, but this is a discussion on Father's So If you don't hear much about mothers, just hold on. Yeah, on Father's Day, we want caves. We <laughs> want, I want a new Rolex for Father's Day. No, Man, we yeah. had pins and ties and socks. <laughs> That's about it. And they getting us some hanging underwear and, and, and telling you have a good day. They ain't uh, getting us nothing. I'll be All happy right. to get a card. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, what about your challenges? Oh, man. Uh, man, technology, the culture. How these kids is, they're exposed to everything. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, me personally, like, to get exposed to stuff, we had to go outside when I was little. So, and I know that made me sound old. <laughs> 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 no, but, like, we, we was outside all day. So, so we, we, we only was exposed to what was around our neighborhoods. And, like, who, the people we was around now, you got YouTube, you got Instagram, Facebook. TikTok, TikTok, Snapchat. All this Snapchat, man. These kids see these other kids and other behaviors 
that uh, grown people doing. And, you know, they try with their parents. And if you're not, like, a solid parent, the kids run over you. And then your kids see their friends doing it to their parents. And then when you raised by Benny Powell <laughs> and you st- you come to me, and I'm kind of old school a little bit myself. For sure. And I'm not going for it. So, you know, we, we bump heads with some of that stuff then. And then uh, I think another challenge for me, too, is trying to give all my kids the time that they need because mm. when I had my kids, I was 20 when my oldest son was born, but I ain't had none. I was po, and I got tired of being po, and so it was like the hustle switch was kicked on. So everything became hustle, 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 hustle. Get get this, get that, get this, get that, because you know them feelings of not being able to give your kids what you want them to have. Um, I don't like it. Mm. I don't like it at all. <laughs> so. Or just being able to basically take care of them or put them into the position to where they they set up nice, you know. But. All right, so we got a couple minutes here. We'll give uh, maybe some words of encouragement to current fathers or fathers to be you two guys. Oh, man, I guess since you, you, you've been kicking it off, man. Uh, words of encouragement. Uh, no, nah, man, just stay in there. Stay down. Uh, get you a healthy uh, community of other men. They got kids uh, that's trying to be stand-up fathers for their kids and everything. Um, get you some resources. Uh, get some ambition about yourself. Uh, have something going on for yourself because outside of your kids, you also have to have a life. Mm-hmm. And if you can't replenish yourself, you can't get none to your family. So, Karen? Man, he said a whole lot. Uh, I would encourage just to try to be your best self. You know what I mean? Uh, I know for me uh, – like like you said, a community of men plugged in at a church, uh, friends, you know, trying to, like you said, hang around other positive people. Uh, and sometimes you got to tune the culture out yeah. and detach and detach and yeah. collect your thoughts. So I would say having your mental health together. Man, well. mental, spiritual, and physical. <laughs> mm-hmm. All three of those. And financial, because like you said, being broke, that's... That's depressing. That's a hard thing on a dad that's trying to be active. <laughs> boy, when you want some filet mignon and you got to get oh. the ramen noodles, boy, that starch don't taste right. <laughs> hey, man, I like chicken ramen noodles, man. I still eat I like to chicken. <laughs> <laughs> John, any last words before we done? Well, I think the one thing that I would say to all the fathers out there is think about the father that you've always wanted to have and become that father. To be able to take and and pick up what you were missing and give it to your kids and to your spouse and to be able to take and just love on them and and cherish them the way that you've wanted to be loved and cherished. Okay. Hey, hey, before y'all cut this, I I got one more thing for Mm -hmm. all the men that got kids out there for real. Hey, if you mess up, if you made mistakes... Do not become a prisoner of your past, man, because you can always change that. So don't let your past mistakes, uh, uh, what is that, predict your future. (laughs) There you go. That's that's real good. That's real good. And I'm going to just leave it with this. You can be better than you were yesterday. You know, if you wasn't a good father on yesterday, you can be a good father today. You can be a good father Mm -hmm. tomorrow. We had one of the best fathers in the world, which was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he showed us that even going through trials and adversity, that we can still depend on him. And for a good father, your children will lean and depend on you no matter how old they get or where they go. Yep. Peace out. Tell them it's all for the broken. 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 Tell them it's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Boy, look around and need hope. No question about it. Can't get around the whole world.